Wow, that's amazing. So welcome, thank you so much. Um, you've been hearing about open source and contribution and stuff. By being here, you are not only becoming part of our community, but you're making our community better and stronger. And we've learned stuff from you that our community never knew before. So thank you so much. Who here has been to um, five or fewer, so like one to five, well, two to five DrupalCons? Cool. And who's been to 10 DrupalCons? I'm going to stop counting now. <laughs> 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 My first DrupalCon was in 2006, and registration was we walked in this little cute mini conference center in Brussels, and we handed Dries a 20-euro note, <laughs> and, and somebody standing next to him handed us a t-shirt. That was registration. We paid cash to Dries. Um, yeah, and there's still photos from that one. Um, so, just killing the time here. Three minutes to go. <laughs> All right, so I want to know, um, because of the nature of this talk, I'd really like to know who we're talking with. Who here is a developer and or does essentially purely technical work? Very. Well, okay. No, okay. All right. That's, you don't have to be. It's okay. It's okay. You can admit it. Um, and who, who engages with clients and hopes to make their lives better and happier? Great. Um, who's in, who's in marketing? Yeah. So Tracy's people. It's my people. When we started our company, um, Tracy was our marketing persona. We just, she was marketing. Mary, Meg, yeah, something, something like that. that. All right. Okay. Um, and who owns or runs an agency or product business? What do you do? Ad, an agency for higher education. Yeah. SU agency. SU agency. SEO. SEO. I'm sorry. We help universities to have more attractive Cool. Okay. An SEO agency for university. That's super cool. And you see, now I'm going to say why I've been eating this cookie and drinking this coffee. Jet lag is hitting me today. So I'm going to artificially enhance my performance with <laughs> <laughs> chocolate chip cookie and caffeine. One minute. One minute. Okay. All right, I'm going to caffeinate for a second, and we'll be right with you. <laughs> I think I've been to all the Drupal cons, but like four or five. So 20 something. <laughs> if my mom calls, I have to answer. <laughs> Should you turn it off? No. So, Tracy, do you remember the Jedi hand gesture for next slide? Yes. Great. <laughs> I suppose the last warm-up question is, whose work does not involve building or maintaining or designing websites? Hollis, I, you're a recruiter, so welcome. Um, ripe, uh, target-rich environment, right? And uh, someone else's hand went up there for a second? No? Okay, so most of us have something to do with building websites, and we're going to talk about um, the big why of content managers, right? Um, and we're going to talk about... Um, how we think about creating um, content to, to fulfill the purpose of the things that everyone here but Hollis does um, 
for a living, presumably. So the why of content management. We are the founders of Open Strategy Partners. Um, very briefly, we are, uh, this is, um, this is SEO optimized. Um, I don't describe us as a content marketing agency, but it makes it easier for people to find us. Uh, we do strategy, content, and communications for agencies, technical product companies, and open source projects. Um, we've got several clients here. Um, it's incredibly fun and interesting. I come from an open source technical and community background in communications. Tracy has a business has a business background, and we've put together a team of technologist communicators to help our peers, like my friends, people who we've been hanging out with since 2005, um, to, to do better business, to communicate the value of what they do better. And it's super, super, super fun. Um, and we, coming from open source land, we try and share a lot of how we work. We have templates, we have enablement workshops, and so on. So, um, and we love questions, and we love um, excuses to connect with people and write, like, give away more of the how we work along the way. Tracy has three business degrees, including an MBA. She has international management experience. She has actual education and structure in leadership and management and business. I have been in Drupal and open source since 2005. I was the 18th employee at a place called Acquia. And I have had a few thousand beers with developers and <laughs> agency owners. <laughs> so I know, um, so I have a very limited skill set um, which falls apart <coughs> without structure and guidance. We come from a common group of friends and um, we decided to start this business together. So essentially we take a now a structured and strategic view of how to like Where's your business? Where would you like it to be? How can we support that com with communication? And what sort of insights can we gather from how you're working and how things might be better? Um, that's us. So team communication and team strategy. And what I think you'll see today in this presentation is that um, what we're trying to show you is a kind of a perfect blend of, of the writing stuff and the, the strategies, the thinking stuff. Oh, the other thing that I have to say, um, I know, go back one slide. And the, yeah, yeah, there, right. So I know it's perfectly obvious, but um, um, completely seriously for a second, um, Tracy is a genius, and it's a real privilege to work with her. And a lot of the systems and all the ways we work are her brain children, and they're amazing. Um, I am the pretty one, so I get to go, to on, go on the road a lot. <laughs> and that's <laughs> my job. So we build websites because we want to tell people something. We want to connect with them about something, and we want to m motivate them to do something, right? That doing something could be joining your club or downloading Drupal or buying your product or whatever. So when we communicate and connect with someone, we're producing this audience experience, which we thought would be a fun, fancy name for good content. Six or eight months ago when we submitted this proposal, we thought that audience experience would be a good way to describe this. We don't use this term internally, but let's understand that for the purpose of this <coughs> presentation, we're talking about writing good content. Good content is true, strategically relevant, and connects with people. And connection is based on empathy, clarity, and trust, right? So OSP and how we're talking about this, you help, we, um, this is to help you communicate the value of what you do to connect with people and help you grow. That's what we're going over today. This is what I al already said in the introduction, actually, but it's a much fu more fun slide. Um, you have a website to connect. Uh, connection is this audience experience. Audience experience is good content that connects. Oh, that is why we're doing it. Cool. <coughs> we're going to be through these in like seven minutes, right? Yeah. Um, so. When we're thinking about communicating, we don't just sit down and blog for people. We want a strategic picture. We want to make sure that the, what we're writing has a purpose and it fulfills that purpose. Um, so we have to be very clear about what the point is we're trying to get across. 
um, you need to think about um, who your target audience is, what makes their, what ruins their day, how does your product or open source project or what have you make it better. Um, you need to, uh, you know, make it interesting to read. It needs to be technically accurate. Um, use appropriate language to connect with your audience, et cetera, et cetera. That is good messaging and communication that goes in there. Um, on the website side of things and on the preparing the page, whoever publishes your stuff, um, you know, it has to be well structured. We have to have semantic stuff in there. We need to make the pages look nice. That's presentation and structure. And then when we write well, when we make sure it's accessible, when we don't waste people's time, when we use, again, appropriate language, we get a good reader experience. Somewhere in there is good content. So I think that it's, it's not an emotional definition, it's an empirical, why are we doing content to connect, to motivate, to convert? It's gotta be good to do that. So, and the things that we're talking about are relatively um, objective and actionable. We're going to go through three pillars to create communication that connects, and um, we're very happy to take questions probably at the end um, about any of the aspects of this stuff. Um, you need to have a foundation of technical truth that um, communicates the business value, whatever that is, to whomever your audience is. Um, you need to know what you're about as an organization, where your strengths and weaknesses are, where you want to improve, who you're not reaching, who you're reaching. Um, make sure that you're creating content that is supporting whatever your priority is currently and maybe you know, your future plans. We've got clients where we're putting wording in to content that we're creating because it's, we know it's coming in their next campaign and we want to like seed the field with that stuff subtly. So fun, there's fun stuff to do like that. Um, and we worked with an executive coach when we founded the company and he helped us find our company motto which is communicate, connect, grow, right? But we also have this concept that we call authentic communication and I'm gonna talk about how to operationally and creatively apply empathy and clarity to build trust. So I'm not sure, is that our mission, it's our vision, it's our, what are those three? Values. Oh, those are our values, those are our values. <laughs> we totally believe in those. <laughs> empathy, clarity, trust. <laughs> All right, I'm up. You wanna do that? Yeah, so uh, the first pillar is foundation, foundation of technical truth. And um, it's based on what we call the OSP value map. And the value map came um, out of a personal experience that I was having with one of our first, uh, first clients, which was also an open source CMS. And I was trying to understand, as a business persona and a marketing persona, I was trying to understand the value that it delivered me. And a lot of the communication that I was coming across um, was extremely technical and it was only talking about very technical features and I was trying to I was wondering to myself uh, why does this matter to me why should I care about these technical things and I was obviously looking out to all of the competitors and I was looking at some of the Drupal communications and other open source CMS's and they were all very technically focused and um, all of the communications they were missing that connection to the value of why we should care about those technical things or the resulting business value of what those technical capabilities were. So we started um, uh, implementing what we call the OSP value map. And it's basically, um, to make the point, you know, when we start with a strong foundation of technical truth that articulates your value, this translates into better strategy and better communication, which then in turn translates into clear, compelling, and accurate content that connects your value to your audience. <coughs> so this is a diagram of the value map. So as you can see, it's quite complex, um, but it's highly structured. And the purpose of putting this together is to create a living library of accurate, agreed upon, product features, the challenges that they solve, and the benefits they bring to your audience. Um, the way that we go about uh, producing this value map is through interviews 
with the team members, the experts on your team, um, all of the various stakeholders, and also sifting through all of your materials, whether they're polished or not. And what we do is collect all of the features, and it's a lot of data. So we put it all in there. And what we start to do then is once we identify the features, we start grouping them into what we call feature areas. And we identify um, the, uh, the challenges that those particular features solve and the benefits that they provide. And in these clusters, so we create these one layer of organization called the feature areas. And then we do another layer of organization on top called the feature categories. And, um, and then what we do is we draw what we call a value case out of that. And a value case is made up of three statements about the benefit, the challenge, and the solution of that particular group of features. So that's the very technical side of it. Um, and what we're able to do is then when we have these clusters and these groups going up into the pyramid, what we can do then is build a positioning out of that. And um, so that's what you see. That's, that's basically uh, the value map where we go from the features into a fact-based product positioning. Um, and all of this work results in a comprehensive inventory of communication components or micro statements. And it helps to give you a structured, predictable way of working. So what happens when you have a foundation of technical truth? Well, you get this unified fact-based positioning based on substance and technical truth that actually resonates with your audience. Um, it's gonna help you create clear product messaging, enable all the stakeholders to communicate consistently, accurately, and compellingly. Can I it's your turn. It's also the furthest I've walked since getting off the plane. Um, so I mentioned, uh, as Tracy said, we, we need to be structured and we need to be repeatable. If we as service providers to technology organizations don't present um, a systematic approach to how we work, nobody's going to take us seriously. We need to assure uh, a quality of, of, the, of our assets, um, a level of technical understanding, and so, and, and we also need to be able to um, do better, right, and not make the same mistake more than twice, right? So we have to have systems, we have to have documentation. And I mentioned never staring at a blank page. Um, every kind of... Wait a minute, there wasn't time? Every Sorry. kind of um, content asset that we produce, we have a, a sort of a, a formula, right? And, and everything starts with, hey, the thesis of this piece of content, what is it about and what does it say it's about? And we have a brand message, which is sort of the subliminal read between the lines message, like, as a company, we care about this, and we're smart people and know Drupal super well, whatever, you're, whatever you want people to think about you. Um, who's it for? What are their pain points? Business goals and so on. Um, now, from the value map and the research, we've already collected as much of that information as possible. So when we go to write content, we can pull these things over and it doesn't, you need to do an investor brief, you need to do a blog post, you need to plan a whole campaign. You've got all of these, you've got the challenges, you've got the personas that are related to them and so on. So you can fill this out um, and it's a super handy way to get rolling. And then when we put it together, this is a real web page um, that we were part of creating and this is a very straightforward, direct application of, of this system. Not yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is, this is applying a systematic approach to creating product landing pages. This is for the Typo3 CMS. Um, it's another PHP-based open source CMS that solves the web pro publishing problem in a really interesting, different way to Drupal with essentially the same components. Um, also a fantastic open source community. Um, so communication components are just units of communication and we give them names so that we understand um, how to use them. And on this page, then they, they are then applied thus. We have our tagline positioning these feature statements and value cases. And the value case, you touched on that. 
Um, and if anyone's familiar with writing case studies um, where you have a challenge um, solution benefit sort of a thing, our concept of the value case is those components. Um, and generally, we want to communicate, we want to see if you're interested really early. We don't want to waste your time. We don't want you to read a whole blog post if it's not relevant to you. So we try and write a value case um, right at the top of a blog post. And it says, benefit. This is what you're going to, this is the beautiful future that you could have if you adopt our, if you adopt Drupal, right? And then we say the challenge, right? And the challenge is not to, not to, I don't know, raise your anger or remind you about how frustrating something is. It's so that you can identify, oh wait, I have that problem too. Whoa, okay, this article is for me. And then you have a solution statement which says, with Drupal, we solve this this way, right? And then all of those things get re-expanded and reused throughout the concept. And But you have a very structured way to help people understand, self-qualify to read something and then know what they're getting. And then you also are helped to create a better asset. Here is another example um, at a different level of the value map. And this is, this is very placative. It's really easy at, in this case, but you know, connect your digital, digital marketing funnel directly through the back end without repeatedly switching between systems, right? Integrate all your digital marketing stuff into the single CMS back end. Blah, that's if anybody's done like marketing ops and had four or five tools open and you have to copy paste and remember what you've updated. like. Wouldn't it be great to have it in one place? Yes. So when you think of marketing campaign management, you think of switching between the bump and with time consuming, right? Oh, who knows that? I know that. I've been in that marketing department. Yes, thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we solve that? Tightly integrate different marketing services directly into Typo 3 for hassle-free digital marketing. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, how do we do that? We said we can create content based on technical truth in the value map, the very lowest layer, the features, right? They are things that do a thing. Avoid, uh, hmm, uh, create and manage fine-grained user rights in the back end and front end to reduce management overhead. Integrate with third-party marketing tools and services. So the way that we do marketing and positioning and create content based on this value map structure is based on the truth. And the further down you go, the further you understand how your system delivers the promises that you make. So the top of the value map, um, you're making big promises in business language, right? But if somebody comes and does due diligence based on business content, you look down and you get to the, the base layer where there is a feature. And if you go look in the code, of course it supports it, right? By the same token, when we write, Developer-focused content, we start at the technical level, right? Because we like the details. And we talk about APIs and whatever. And we can give information about the business values of having the APIs to the developers while explaining how to use them. So the developers say, boss, 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 I have to use Typo3. It's so amazing. I have to use Drupal. I have to use whatever. You give the developers the idea of the connection to the positioning, right? You, you, you talk about the benefit. They can have a more valuable conversation with budget holders, right? And act as more effective influencers. It's super nice and it's all true. So going down in the value map is how and going up in the value map is why. Thank you. Thank you. Was it you? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anna Lauda. So um, very powerful and it lets us it lets us focus on, you know, choosing pretty words and putting them in a good order. All right, I'm back. You're back? I'm back. All right. So the second pillar that we want to take you through is um, a, a strong content and communication strategy. So reflecting back on the value map um, and the strategy that grows from it, we want to emphasize why strategy uh, is so important and worth the time and energy to invest in it. So there's a lot of benefits to having a, a strong strategy and um, I think it's often a practice that maybe um, you know 
people don't understand why you should spend the time on it or what the value of having a good strategy is. And um, it's really important to provide vision and direction. I think this is the top benefit. Um, all of the communication that you do needs to be focused through the lens of having vision and direction. And this obviously helps guide your content down a very focused path. Um, the other things that uh, a good content, good content and communication strategy help you with is really understanding your, your audience, un knowing what their needs and their problems are because you did all the work to research, to interview, to speak with your audience, and you have these things collected in a, doc in a document somewhere, um, and the people who are writing the content can refer to this and uh, put it through that lens. Um, the strategy work also helps you understand how you fit in the competitive la landscape, and so this can help develop your product development um, choices, as well as um, choosing how to focus your communications on your unique value proposition. And um, it strategy also helps you create plans um, so that you can focus your resources and energy on the narratives that connect with your audience. Still me. <laughs> um, so the third pillar uh, that we want to take you through is communication that connects. So we have a practice and a framework called that Jan mentioned earlier called the authentic communication framework. And it's based on three values of communicating with empathy, with clarity, and with trust. Um, we'd like it. We'd like to take you through these uh, three values and identify both the operational practices of the value and the writing practices of the value. Um, in our own writing practice, we've, de we've developed a set of codes that encapsulate uh, good writing and editing practices and help us learn and improve together. Um, and these codes were another, um, were sort of born out of um, another one of my own experiences um, as a non-writer, so I'm in our, in our working relationship, I'm the strategist, and um, that's yeah, that's my main focus is is strategy, and I'm not a writer by nature. And but obviously, when companies are small, you you know everybody has to chip in everywhere. And so, I was trying to write, and obviously, you know, trying to do my very best. And I was very frustrated by the feedback and the changes to my work that I had poured so much love and energy into. Um, I really wanted to learn why Jam was making these changes that he made. Like my whole paper would come back like with the equivalent of red marker all over it. <laughs> and, and as upset as you were, you said, okay, but it's better. Why is it better? I did. <laughs> and so we basically, we spent the next two years uh, trying to siphon these writing principles out of Jam Jam's brain. And I also looked up a few other industry experts and we put them into a system. And we'll share a few samples of those codes and principles with you. So, <coughs> first value, empathy. Oh, this is so hard to see. Oh, here, stand in front of the screen. Oh yeah, maybe that's better. Here we go. Um, so, operational empathy is really trying to put yourself into your audience's shoes, really trying to understand them and their problems and the things that they experience in a day. Um, also, what sources they trust and things like that. And so these are a few of the operational things that you can do um, to, to uh, have empathy for your audience. So interviews, I think, are the most important. Actually speaking with your target audience or the subject matter experts. Um, client advocates, devs, tech leads, um, all the people have conversations. Um, audience research is also really helpful to go out and see what else is being said in the industry, not necessarily with your direct contents, contacts with your, uh, with your clients or your audience, but um, finding the articles that they read um, and maybe there's some studies being done and finding some kind of aggregate statistics and data about their challenges and needs. Uh, surveys are another great way, similar to interviews, but a little bit more structured on the questions and uh, being able to identify uh, patterns of their challenges and needs. Um, quoting the subject matter experts. Um, as it says, we cannot be experts in everything, and the way that we do that and best 
be accurate and authentic is by speaking with the subject matter experts and quoting them directly in our materials. Um, talking with the stakeholders, definitely important, and also de-siloing. And so collecting various perspectives um, helps a lot. So these are the codes that I was talking about earlier that we siphoned out of the brain. Um, so the first code that we have is WIFM, which, <laughs> which is, stands for what's in it for me. Um, make sure that you lead with the benefit showing your audience why they should care in the opening section. I think Jan mentioned this earlier as well. Uh, the, nec the next one stands for connect. So using language that will connect uh, with your target audience. Um, referring back to my earlier experience when I was reading all the, the technical materials and they were only talking about the technical features, that's not speaking the business language or the marketer's language. So um, here's a perfect example. Marketers care about product market fit, right? And open source developers are turned off by audience segmentation, right? Words like that. Product market fit and audience segmentation simply means are you building something that other people care about and who exactly can you help with it, right? <coughs> That's an example of two different ways you can write exactly the same thing with empathy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next one is stands for criticism, um, and uh, it's really important to avoid hidden or implied criticism, um, and specifically never tell people that they're doing it wrong. Um, and this is actually an easier trap to fall into than you might think. Oh, hmm? sorry. He's the performer, not me. <laughs> um, uh, the next code is FUD, which is a little bit similar to criticism. Um, avoid negative copy and FUD marketing, which stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, we, also, we always want to talk about things in the positive. So, um, and uh, talk about the actual thing that you do do. Um, the next code is for inclus inclusive language. Um, basically, want to help readers feel respected and welcome and avoid any language of prejudice, bias, discrimination, or lacking sensitivity. That's pretty clear. Um, the, lax the last one, the last one is PAX, um, which is never using uh, violent language. Um, and this is also another trap that's kind of easy to fall into. So what we want to, uh, you know, we want to use peaceful, inclusive metaphors like art or carpentry or gardening and avoid things like war or violence or even sports tends to fall in that category as well. Um, and the sports, leave it on the slides for a minute. The sports one is really interesting because um, it turns out that we, we are native English speakers, but we have clients who are not native English speakers, and we have audiences who are not native spe English speakers. And um, if I use a baseball metaphor in the UK that is not respectful or inclusive, right, much less with someone from a different country with different practices. So um, keep things plain and simple. And I want to just talk quickly about this process and where the codes fall into it. Mm, we divide our... Um, once we've got a brief, written a draft, done basic, going over that, we hand it off to another team member who does an editing pass, and we do five passes um, on the work. The first thing is what we call the positivity pass. And we can read the article and notice anything that is just great. And we ch take a code, and we put plus, plus, and the code, and we might even give them a compliment or thank them or you know some expression of gratitude. As an editor, this also reminds me not to change that and not to lose it, because it's great, right? Don't lose it in the shuffle. Then we look at the overall narrative and logical structure of the piece, um, the flow and the sense of the individual units, and we go down and down in this kind of matryoshka doll until we get to the choice of individual words. And at any point, we can write, hey, you know, in the comment we'll write, connect in all caps, I don't think that using this word for developers is gonna hit right, why don't you try this? Um, we don't say, or you know, maybe, maybe I use suggesting mode in Google Docs and I, and I say, hey, I changed this to this other thing for this reason. Now we never say to each other, um, that was wrong and I fixed it for you, that was incorrect and this is correct, except for factual issues, right? But any of these editorial issues, when we have the time, and um, 
you know, are applying our full process, we are having conversation between peers and we're learning from each other. So this is a flat structure where we're having an exchange and the, the, the author who goes back after the editing pass is fully within um, her rights to say, ah, your suggestion is so awesome, it makes the piece better, done. Or they say, ah, mm, no, I chose that word because of A, B, and C and I really wanna keep that and then it's done but both people have thought about it and agreed on the outcome, so that's also okay. And often I will see a third option that, you know, that I'm inspired by the conversation that we're having, right? Um, I was very frustrated by editing in my past as a writer where some senior editor would find time in their day to edit 30% of my thing. They would make changes that I didn't understand. My stuff would disappear, would have my name on it, but it wasn't my words, and so on and so on. Um, and this gives us an opportunity to learn and teach and be structured and very clear. And also psychologically, putting it in a code removes the you are wrong, you know, you always, none of those negative psychological things. We're talking about this codex of documented principles. We have full documentation for all of these. So if somebody really disagrees, like we can go have a proper conversation about it and figure it out or create a new code or change the rules. And it's fun and it's really nice. They're all on our website. Super happy to talk about these all day as well. So moving right along to clarity. We've got, oh, we've got 17 minutes, right, Mike? Thank you. OK, so empathy, now clarity. Um, we need clarity in two ways, um, as we were talking about before, operationally and in our presentation. All of these flow in and out of each other, and a lot of codes have similar cousins because there might be one cousin in the structure and narrative section and there might be one in the choice of words section that are slightly different applications of, <coughs> of a similar concept. So anyway, we write for technology organizations. We want to tell the truth and we want to remember the difference between Java and JavaScript, <laughs> right? So you, we also, once we do our writing, we pass everything back to the client, however many review milestones they want. You know, we usually plan a campaign review the titles and the, the audience, maybe give them the briefs before we start writing, depends on the client. But before anybody publishes everything, this is, a lot of times this is going out under someone else's name if it's not one of our guest posts. So they don't want nonsense going out under their name and they wanna be proud of what they're putting their name under, right? So we're accurate. We like, make sense, okay? <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> um, now, and then, sort of moving into the, 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 the other side of this, like we, we just have to be focused. We shouldn't be wasting people's time. We should be efficient with our communication. Um, and it should be clear and easy to consume. Um, there's a code coming on the very next slide, which is wall. Um, a wall of text is super, super hard to parse. And if you have four or five headers in a blog post that also tell the story and a couple of bulleted lists that attract the eye, you can really, on the one hand, you can really help people scan it and parse and get through what you've done quicker if they need to. On the other hand, hot tip, whatever you put in, in a bulleted list, people are gonna notice it and read it. No matter where it is, they're gonna consume that. So wall means t make your headers tell the story, put important stuff in a list instead of in a giant paragraph, write shorter paragraphs, et cetera. So here we're telling the same story over again. Start with the point of what the thing is about, let people decide whether they want to read further. Do it with a value case, do it another way, doesn't matter, but tell me the point. In a case study, I don't like seeing the history of the such and so company founded in whenever and blah, 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 blah. I know they're important, tell me later, tell me what their problem was because then I, need, I know if I care, right? Right. Spock, right? <laughs> um, Use logic, um, the, at most, uh, the common application of this when we're working is somebody will make a claim that something is the best, right? Or the most efficient or the fastest or something. Um, we need to say, you know, according to such and so testing, page load times with this thing are 30% faster or whatever. At least link to something, make a small quote, what have you. Um, and don't, you know, make sense. Please do make sense. Don't talk nonsense. Crisp, hey, it's really beautiful but this is not a creative writing exercise, let's like, let's tighten it up. Um, if 
any word is not building, any word or any sentence is not building towards the point of what you're doing, cut it out. Um, writing gets better and better with more and more reviews up to a point. Um, and explain technical terms. We have uh, several different codes that touch on this, but if you're targeting your audience at a particular level of developers, okay, fine, you can assume a certain level of knowledge, but I bet you also want to help less knowledgeable people who want to learn or want to become more senior or are moving into the industry. Give them enough context to also know what you're talking about. So, you know, explain uh, like a such and so uh, um, brackets a technology for parsing something or other, uh, removing dangerous code, whatever it is. Just a little bracket, maybe a link to uh, a Wikipedia entry, a, a website, whatever. Because other people can then educate themselves and find the context to learn and come with you and, and you're benefiting more people that way. Um, super nice. And we have a couple of others. Um, explain acronyms is also in that group. So, right. So that's writing for clarity. And now we move to trust. The first thing that we have to say about trust is that if we operate and create with empathy, it builds trust, right? And trust is a common outcome of acting in this way. Um, we talk about trust signals, and I'm gonna give some examples of these in a minute, um, but you need to be showing your potential clients, your potential new hires, your whoever it is that you're trying to attract, that you know what you're doing, that you have experience. Um, this is a great place to be writing blogs about how you did X, Y with the last Drupal upgrade and so on. It shows that you know what you're doing. It's the same reason why you'd put your certification on the website, right? You're broadcasting the signal that you're trustworthy. Um, and you know, by sharing the information, you're showing that you're a good open source citizen and so on. Um, in your communication in general, um, don't just talk about yourself. Celebrate the people around you. Congratulate other communities. Whatever it is, it's, it's really nice. This especially applies, I think, to social media. But it's totally okay to acknowledge that other people are doing well, too. And it, it's genuine, and it's a gratitude practice um, that should also make you feel better, honestly. Um, be your authentic self. Um, operate with integrity, please. Um, you know, th this is a really, really interesting one. I've... Um, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons we founded the agency is because I saw technology marketing in the past that I really didn't appreciate. Um, and sales teams that were selling things that didn't exist and marketers who were writing nonsense because they were too afraid to ask questions, right? Go ask the questions and quote your subject matter expert, right? And, and like be honest that your product doesn't, d we don't have a chat function. If that's essential to you, like let's talk about what you really need to do. And if that's essential, cool, go on, it's cool, it's fine. Be honest about that, it's okay because, you know, if your product is centered on chatting and you don't have a chat, it's fine. And be clear about that, right? Um, so, talking about these trust signals, broadcast the signals that build trust. The next two slides are relatively actionable. Um, we will, I'm very, very happy to share the slides with people. There's also more, oh no. Right, I'm one slide ahead of myself. Yes, and we've only got 10 minutes left Great, if we want to okay. leave room for questions. Right, so there's like three slides left, right? Okay, cool. Perfect. So look, Speed. this is the same thing. <sighs> Link to something that shows what you're saying is true. Um, <laughs> use facts. Um, give examples of what you're talking about. Thank you, Mike, 10 minutes. Give examples. That helps um, people like, um, you know, th th have a picture in their mind. Um, same with metaphors, right? That's enough. Whatever's to fill the something or other. You know, that sort of stuff that they do in reporting. Um, quote subject matter experts directly. I can write expert level content about most things because I'm not afraid to ask questions and I quote and I run through the review process. Quote the people. In the age of AI, human generated content remains valuable and important and interesting and one of the big differentiators is you're creating new content in the world when you're quoting the person who knows about her thing more than anybody in the world, right? So quote your experts, avoid exaggeration, um, be simple and to the point. Now, trust signals, because they're fun. Um, and we have some more resources on our website about this. This is an example of if you're trying to choose an open source project, what are you looking at, right? 
what makes you think maybe that open source project would be good? It seems to solve the problem that I want, but do they have a code of conduct? What do their release notes look like? How long are their issue queues, right? The origin story of this is it came out of like, how do I choose between the five Drupal modules that seem to do the same thing, right? Um, do they have a visible license? How many people are using it? And so on and so on and so forth, right? And this all, I think you all have a, like a gut <coughs> feeling that like, yeah, this is true. Um, helps me choose something, right? Um, so we can do a sort of assessment of this with, with some of our clients and then, and then in theory say, hey, you don't have that and we can show you where to get one or where to, how to create one and you know, you're doing well over here. Some, some of these are indirect, most of them are direct, right? You can't exactly increase the number of your downloads in any honest way, right? But you can make sure that your release notes are good and structured and you, 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 know, you read these other things, whatever. Um, if you're an agency, it's a completely different set of signals. You need to uh, show people that we build and sell services, a team of experts sharing our knowledge, qualified and experienced in using a set of tools process with proven track record of success. That is a content structure. Show whatever it is you do as a product-like grouping of functionalities and solutions. As open source practitioners, talk, uh, show the tools and processes that you use. We're specialized in Agile and um, CDNs and Drupal, right? Have a quick explanation on your website of the tools that you use blog about the tools to show that you know what you're doing so that it's credible that your products make a positive difference, right? That they work. Have team profiles with people's interests and expertise on them. The senior designer should uh, a blog about Adobe XD and CSS and I don't know which is the right color blue for corporations, right? And the head lead dev and the front end and so on. Everybody should have their favorite tools. All this stuff that shows that credibly they work in the space, their name goes on those blog posts. There's a link there. There's a link between these. Google sees that, or search machines see that. You build authority and, and, and reputation, right? So you have a team that is qualified and experienced in using tools to deliver your products. The last piece, you've done it successfully. Someone choosing you isn't the first your solutions work, and your team is good to work with. Case studies and testimonies. So those are trust signals for an agent services shaped business. Please go to our website where we have a writing and editing guide, we have the full edi editing codes, and we have an editing code starter page, which is fun. Um, we have a whole page about the value map um, we have a content writing guide for tech products, which is fun and um, talks about all those components and so on. We blog, not as often as we want to. We blog every damn day. Ooh. We blog every day, but mostly for other people. Um, and we have a podcast that um, sometimes we get out regularly, sometimes we don't, but we've done a bunch of episodes about how we write and edit and work together, and they're fun and relatively short. So, and please get in touch with us. We talked about why you have a website, how to make good content, and why you should make good content. Hopefully we showed you some principles, um, actionable ways to create communication that connects with people and helps you grow in whatever you're doing. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. <laughs> and we have, uh, I believe we have six official minutes if there are any questions. I know it was a lot. Everybody take a deep breath. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are atoms, 001s. They are carbon neutral, recyclable, machine washable, and the second most comfortable pair of shoes I have. And they're from um, Brooklyn, uh, manufactured in Korea, companies in Brooklyn. Next question, university SEO man. Yeah, so um, how do you derive new content and how do you margin it? Yep. Uh, content wise, uh, how about uh, impact on process? AI. AI's impact on process, um, uh, having too much content in the world, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my favorite perspective currently about the state of AI now is that it's like a very enthusiastic intern. So you can get a lot of, 
You can get a lot of information, some of which will be useful, um, and some won't. We are experimenting with, um, with doing basic research or saying, hey, what does the internet say are the most ten, important, 10 most important points about something? But we're backing all of that up with our own, um, with our own work. The next generation of AI is going to be able to combine private data sets with public data. And we believe that with the value map and the content libraries from our clients, we'll be able to draw some smart conclusions and probably write some smarter outlines and so on. So um, plus, we truly believe that working with people who want to communicate in their own voice and creating new content in the world is going to be meaningful for some amount of time, right? Um, also, I'm no expert, but I've heard that the search engines are pretty much already hip to when AI is generating content and they're, they're giving it quite hefty penalties, which is, I mean, for me, that's great news. And I think for most of us, probably. Yes, ma'am. Right. We do those too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did you say commend at the beginning? Yeah. So I'll just repeat it for the recording. Um, she, she's, a, she's a journalist and works in healthcare writing and SEO and um, finds it interesting and unusual that we have this solution to the blank page problem and not just a style guide. So also, on our website, um, there's a blog post. The image is like um, some, uh, a carnation in a series of photos, a time lapse of it blooming. And in that blog post about how we work, there is the basic content template that we use. And please download it. Please get in touch. Let's talk about it. It's fun. We have them for many, many other formats. Matthias. No, I really don't want to repeat you. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, because uh, I also do development, but I, I also do development, and I also work with writing, and I've been using this. And if you've ever worked in a software project that is well-planned, well-structured, you know how fast it is to write the real code at the end, and then having a really good review process afterwards, how good it makes your code, how much you learn from it. Hmm. Yeah, this is kind of it. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Nice. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, Matthias is um, oh, many. One more, one more thing. Well, oh, one more thing. Steve. And the, the magical thing that actually happened once is that suddenly you discover a feature you didn't know you had. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So the value map is really interesting because um, we're moving it into a proper database now, and um, y you can say, "Hey, this thing is sitting off by its own." So like, if it's not connected to the delivering value, why are you spending money on it? Or you say you do this thing, but there's no how, right? It's pretty fascinating. Um, um, Matthias is many things. He, among them, he is a team member at Open Strategy Partners. He's also a, a Type 03 Association board member. Type 03 is one of the many um, open source pro uh, projects that we are professionally and personally involved in, along with Drupal and a bunch of others. Any other questions? Nope. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.